Hi, I'm Chris with Afflictor. We're gonna do something unusual today. We're gonna to talk about one of my favorite fruits and a prime deer attractant, the pawpaw. Stay tuned. All right, so a little bit different for us today. What I wanted to do is um, I'm taking a walk in the pawpaw patch today. Uh, picking pawpaws so we can make some jam and some other stuff, but I really thought it'd be important to give you guys some identifiers on how to identify the pawpaw trees, the fruit, the plant, uh, because it is a tremendous deer attracting plant and it's so short lived. But we have actually had experiences here locally where my friends live all around this area where we've seen bucks, especially this time of year, travel two and a half miles to come to this pawpaw patch off and on just for the short little bit of season that they're here and then disappear not to come back to this area at all. So they're only traveling here for the food source. Now, whether they're following mature does or they just happen to love pawpaws, I'm not sure, but this area will be loaded with deer for just a few short weeks and then that's it. And then those deer are gone and not here at all. In fact, early season, when I come in here to check the pawpaw trees to see how they're producing, there will be no deer trails in here at all. But already, since these have started to fall over the last four days, there's trails all through this whole patch down below me, all, all across here. So what's interesting is pawpaws seemed, in my experience, to like creek bottoms, well-drained, high fertile soil, and this area is on a steep hill. So as a kid, I grew up on this small creek basin that runs through about three miles of area. And here and there, all along those three miles, are these pawpaw trees, and they have always been a tremendous draw for whitetails and every other thing. Uh, the first thing that's gonna identify ripe pawpaws is the smell. You can't get over it. When you're walking through an area and there is ripe pawpaws on the ground, you will instantly smell them. It is, it's all on its own. It's like somewhere between a banana and a mango and whatever other fruit you wanna mix in there, a little bit of cantaloupe, pear, whatever. It is really, really unique but pawpaws are a great deer attractant. And if you can find them this time of year, deer will leave the oaks to come eat in these pawpaws. I guarantee it. And it's just a little bit of a short time. You can set a, a stand, a climber, a saddle, a quick tree stand uh, pop up anywhere in this basin and intercept some good whitetail. So let's talk a little bit about what the pawpaw tree looks like and we'll uh, get into it. So right here is a young pawpaw. As you can see, there's no fruit on this tree, but these leaves are huge. They're really easy to identify because of their size. Now, the one fragile thing about pawpaws, as we look around, if you look up in the tree here, you can see some pawpaws clinging up there. I will come in here early spring and see how the fruit is doing. Pawpaws really have a hard time pollinating. So one of the biggest issues is their flower doesn't have a real sweet smell. It actually has a rotten smell to it, rotten meat. And so instead of attract, attracting your normal pollinators, it attracts things, you know, like carrion beetles and other flies that are looking for rotting flesh. If that happens too early in the season while it's still cold, and those pollinators specifically that like that dead meat type thing aren't out yet, these trees won't pollinate and they will not produce fruit. And that happens all over. So sometimes you can have a tricky spring where the weather is not right and you don't get a good production. Last year's production in this area was minimal. The year before was zero. This year is booming. We have pawpaws everywhere. So I'm gonna be able to do uh, some jams and jellies and some custards and some ice cream. We have plenty to work with. So let's walk around here a little bit, check out where the deer are coming through and what the pawpaw, pawpaws look like on the ground. All right, so let's walk down this hill here and check some things out. You can see it's pretty steep in here. If I come down. You can see a pawpaw has fallen right there. We'll pick that up as we scan here. You can see there's pawpaws everywhere. So I'm gonna be able to really have a field day in here picking up pawpaws. One just fell right there. <laughs> So what's important uh, to remember <clears throat> when you're picking pawpaws is you only wanna pick the pawpaws that have hit the ground, that are ripe and really good. If you eat a green pawpaw or one that isn't fully ripe, 
you will get a stomach ache, you will feel nauseous, guaranteed. There's just something about the unripe fruit. A lot of people you'll see they get overexcited when they're in a pawpaw patch and they want to shake the trees to get more fruit to drop. That's fine if you give the tree just a real gentle shake like this. And you can see some fruit has fallen. But if you shake it too hard, the green fruit will fall. So if you get a fruit on the ground and you squeeze it and it's not soft, it is not ready to eat. Now the animals have already been through here real heavy. We have a very heavy deer trail coming in right across the base here and across the top of this ridge where I entered up there. And the creek runs just behind us here. But you can see it's a very dark shaded area. We have all different size pawpaw trees here from these really small ones that aren't ready to produce fruit yet. But as soon as they get this big, which isn't very big, you can see it's only a couple inches here. And we look up, we can see we got plenty of fruit. And if we just give it a little rattle, we get those nice fresh fruit to fall. And we're just littered in here pretty amazing but I have no problem saying that deer will detour a long way to get into these pawpaw patches so you know there's basically about 18 states uh, that are really rich with pawpaws some states are haphazard a lot of people like to plant them if you're really interested in learning more about pawpaws you can go to the University of Kentucky I believe they are the only uh, current research facility in the world full-time for pawpaws and you can also I believe get trees off of them if you wanted to plant some on your property but we're going to cut open a pawpaw I'm going to show you what it looks like inside so as we cut this pawpaw they cut really easy and you'll see that inside here you have these great big seeds and they're spaced pretty close behind each other as you go through you don't want to eat the seeds want to get rid of those. The best way to eat this is if you just take a spoon, you can spoon out a whole big bite of this and then pop it in your mouth and then just spit out the seeds. There's really nothing better. It is delicious. So you want to make sure you spit out the seeds. Another interesting fact about pawpaw leaves, bark, and twigs is it's a natural insecticide. Now I don't know how to that down to make it work for us but I do know that they do contain a lot of toxins in them that insects don't like. Anyway I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of light on the pawpaw not just for food source or a fun treat if you can find them but for a deer magnet a place where you can go and you know deer are going to travel a long way to find and take advantage of this fruit in its short season. So good luck on your hunting and good luck finding pawpaws.